This is the Trayvon Martin case, the state of Florida versus George Zimmerman, presided by Judge Deborah S. Nelson. The trial began with opening statement from prosecutor John Guy, who testified on the behalf of the late Trayvon Martin. He argued that Trayvon Martin was racially profiled and wrongly killed. It all began on the rainy night of February 26, 2012, when Trayvon Martin went to a local 7-Eleven to buy Skittles and Arizona fruit juice. On his way back to retreat at Twin Lakes, the residence of his father's girlfriend, Trayvon Martin was on the phone with Rachel Gentel when he complained of George Zimmerman following him. On the witness stand, she said Trayvon told her he was being followed. I had asked him how the man looked like. He looked like a creepy ass crapper. Gentel says over the phone she heard Zimmerman approach and confront Martin. And I say Trayvon, and then he said, why are you following me for? And then I heard a hard breath man come and say, what you doing around here? Are you following him? Yeah, okay, we don't need you to do that. Through the phone recording, you can hear Zimmerman's conversation with the non-emergency dispatcher, Sean Knopf. Knopf had asked Zimmerman not to follow Trayvon Martin. Though Knopf had testified that it was only a suggestion due to liability issues, nevertheless, it was still said. Phone records show that Rachel Gentel was the last person to speak to Trayvon Martin. Gentel stated that a few seconds after Zimmerman had approached Martin, the phone call had ended. These assholes, they always get away. John Guy testified those were the words in Zimmerman's head when he decided to shoot and take Trayvon Martin's life. Defense attorney Don West argued that George Zimmerman was viciously attacked and shot Trayvon Martin in an act of self-defense. West claimed that George Zimmerman said that they were arguing when Trayvon Martin sucker punched George Zimmerman and hammered his head into the ground. Zimmerman claimed that Trayvon Martin straddled him and covered his bleeding nose. But when Martin's jacket was tested, there was no evidence of blood or DNA from George Zimmerman. But when Trayvon's fingernails were scraped, there was no evidence of George Zimmerman's blood or DNA. George Zimmerman claimed that Trayvon Martin also went for his gun. But when the holster and the gun were tested, there was no evidence of Trayvon Martin's DNA. Zimmerman claimed that after he shot Martin, that he laid him on his back and spread his arms out. But when police arrived at the scene, they found Martin face down with his hands under him. Sergeant Anthony Romando testified that he was unable to find a pause and attempted to perform CPR on Trayvon Martin with a plastic bag covering his wound to prevent the loss of air. When Martin was found unresponsive, he was declared dead at the scene. A forensic pathologist stated that the autopsy and toxicology reports were consistent with Zimmerman's story. He stated that if you lean over someone, you will notice that the clothing tends to fall away from the chest. Instead, if you're lying on your back when someone shoots you. The pathologist estimated the shooting range to be between two and four inches away. But Dr. Bayo on the prosecution side said that the gun could have been anywhere from five inches to four feet. In my opinion, George Zimmerman is guilty. Even though Dr. Bayo found Trayvon Martin's knees were stained, it is impossible for George Zimmerman to get from under him without the body being flipped. Trayvon Martin was 5'11 compared to Zimmerman being 5'7. Also, George Zimmerman's stories were inconsistent with the findings. How could Trayvon Martin have gone for his gun holster if there was no evidence of Trayvon Martin's DNA on it? Another inconsistent finding was that Dr. Rayo said that George Zimmerman's injuries were not life-threatening and insignificant, which means his head was not hammered into the ground with as much force as West made it out to be. Since Trayvon Martin's fingernails were scraped and no evidence of Zimmerman's DNA or blood was found, there's no possible way that Trayvon Martin has touched Zimmerman as many times as he made it seem. Lastly, Wendy Dorval was the Sanford Neighborhood Watch Coordinator who helped George Zimmerman form his own neighborhood watch. Though there were no specific rules on carrying firearms, George Zimmerman was told, do not be the vigilante police. Call the non-emergency number or 911.
again